It has to be said that the world's agenda for men is quite obvious. To make as many effeminate, worthless, or gay as possible, to kill the babies, and then to have the women take over as leaders. Hi, my name is Ali Schwag and this is 10 Points to Ponder, where we like to talk about all the things that get you canceled. Race, politics, Jesus, and manhood. Today, rather than react, because I have very strong feelings related to this, I instead want to respond and start with a jumping off point. I, I just got a, a text this morning from a friend who had been watching... Uh, the Best Man series. And it's a, a black show in which uh, it's taken off an old movie, The Best Man. And and what he was saying is that he's, he's really disappointed at how woke the show was and how it seemed that the show, they had to have one of the character's children be gay and of course they wanted it to be a gay boy because as a black show uh one of the things that that they try to do with black people is is have them participate and be basically the leaders or spearheads of every sort of evil therefore anyone who says this is evil also now has to face the charge of being a racist because they, they'll use a black person when they want to promote the murder of other black people, they use a black person. But if the KKK does it, oh, then it's evil. Um, we're, we're gonna head to the streets if it's, if it's uh, Derek Chauvin who, who need uh, on the neck of, of George Floyd, but we won't take it to the streets when people are killed every single day. And not only that, we pay handsomely these rappers who say all these horrible lyrics about women, degrading women, about how other people are their opposition or ops, as they would say, and how, how their lives are essentially worthless. How, how they have these videos, right? If it was some white people sitting around in, in a KKK cone uh, costume, right? With, with a gun pointed at, at their, they're gonna kill a black person. Oh, that's censored. That's horrible. That's evil. That's evidence of a system of oppression. But instead, those same white people, right? The same racist liberals, will then just give you a bunch of money so that you can go out and spew these hateful lyrics toward other black people. And we don't say anything about it. Now, I am digressing from my main point because I do want to respond with scripture and I wanna start from the beginning, from Genesis, right? And understand, first of all, the proper role of men and women, what occurred with the curse, um, and then, and then the plan that, that Satan has for people, because we always talk about how, uh, God has a, a great plan for us, right? He knows the plans that he has for us, uh, plans to, to do good, uh, and not evil to give you a future and a hope. But you know, Satan also has a plan for people. And that plan is being worked out here in this society, I just talked with another friend who, who himself is just feeling the darkness of this society. And it's like everything is coming and working together. And I'll definitely do another video in regards to the darkness when it comes to politics. But today I wanna focus on what's going on culturally and within our families. And so we'll turn to Genesis and, and just look at what happened with the curse and look at, look at what our roles should be and, and what this tells us about ourselves. And so I'll start in Genesis 3, 
where it says that the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said that you shall eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree of, in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And then the serpent lies to the woman and says, oh, you will not die because God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when this woman saw that the tree was good, that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. Here we go. This is the lust that, that John talks about in 1 John, that it was good for food, right? The lust of the flesh, the appetites. This is something that as a man, we need to master. We need to master our appetites, the things that we want and understand that, that Esau for one morsel of meat gave away his entire birthright and men for one fling, for one engagement affair for a few dollars, they will give away all of their integrity. They'll give away the life that they built. That was, it was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. So the lust of the flesh was first. Now the lust of the eyes, what we look at, what, what seems pleasant, right? We're in a social media society where everybody is so concerned, more concerned with how things look than how things actually are. So as long as it looks good, it's okay. You might be in millions of dollars of debt, right? To get that vacation. But as long as you take pictures and you all smile and you're showing the, the high life, then all of a sudden everything's okay because everybody else with their eyes is, is, is perceiving that you're doing good. Christmas. We're all gonna wear our little... Christmas pajamas and take those little photos around the Christmas tree and and you'll see all these perfect families that are assembled around the Christmas tree with their pajamas on. Oh, it's so cute. And yet what's going on in those families? Are the parents cheating on each other? Are they fighting every single night over money problems? Are they beating the kids? Are the kids being abused? Are the kids doing drugs in their basement? It doesn't matter. As long as they take that picture, right? Because they look good. The lust of the eyes. And then it said that what was good about the tree, what the woman liked, was it was desirable to make one wise. The pride of life. I did it my way. I did it with my own strength, right? I don't need anyone else. I don't need God. I do it my own way. And, and that's the pride of life. All of the things that I've accomplished by my own hand, by my own strength. Beware, lest you end up like Nebuchadnezzar eating the grass of the field because of this pride of life. And so... When the woman saw the tree, she also gave it to her husband who was with her and he ate. And this is the problem. This is the, the struggle of all mankind. And I'm talking about men specifically, not just mankind, men specifically. Adam was right there when Eve was talking to the serpent. We are right there sitting, watching the football game while your kids are watching whatever on social media and you don't say anything, you don't check in, you wouldn't dare to restrict their time on their phones so that more and more and more of this world can be pumped into them because you don't wanna make waves, right? During COVID, when, when your wives were telling you, oh, mask up, everybody, we're going to die, right? Guys, guys, guys were, were cowering, 
cowering. The only reason you got locked down is because you were a coward. You didn't stand up. You didn't stand up and claim your natural place of leadership. Instead, you were passive. And so for men, we always have to reject passivity. If we're sitting in our own homes and our wives are talking to the serpent, we say, get away from her. Get back. Get back. We see the serpent coming and slithering in the ears of our children. All this music, all this bull crap, rap music, all this garbage that tells them that, that their lives aren't, aren't of any value, that the lives of others are of no value, that every woman is simply worthless. She's, she's a bee, she's a hoe. We, we get to mistreat her, we get to do whatever, right? No consequences. You can, you can just go out and, and, and do what thou wilt, right? Because that's what Satan wants for your life. And we're sitting there as men, just sitting back, letting it happen. And because of this, Adam and Eve were taken out of the garden and they had toil. And one of the things that is the curse when it comes to men and women, which relates to what I was talking about with this show, the best man and what I'm talking about in relation to the society is that, is that there has always been a desire for women to come and rule. It's within them. They want to take over, but they can't take, they can't take the smoke when it comes, right? We are uniquely gifted as men to take on the slings and the arrows and the toil. Our job is to provide and protect even unto the death, to strive against sin even unto the death. And so we look at this curse and we look at the curse to the woman. Genesis 3, 16 to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. This word desire, it's a desire to master. Your, your, your greatest desire will be to be a man, to have the strength, right? You're gonna go lift some weights. You're gonna, you're gonna find the most passive man that you can because now I get to control him. Now I get to tell him what to do. And all the while, you're not satisfied with that. You hate that. You hate the fact that, that you've got such a soft and passive man that, that you're trying to raise the kids and, and bring them up in godly character by yourself. But it doesn't matter because the curse still exists. And it says your desire shall be for your husband. And yet he shall rule over you. There's that desire. Let's let's keep in the back of your mind that word desire because we'll get to that again. And then it says for Adam, because you've heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you saying you shall not eat it. Cursed is the ground for your sake and toil you shall eat of it. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring for you and you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return so this is the death that is the result of sin the wages of sin is death there's the first death right now they're going to actually die and return to the dust but then there's also the second death if without repenting of their sins and believing upon Jesus Christ, then they get separated from God for all eternity. That's the second death. And here, it's important to note that the ground is cursed, but 
work itself is not a curse because even prior to this curse, man was supposed to work. He was supposed to tend and keep the garden. And so now we see that this joy of work kind of gets a little bit tainted. It's a little bit more difficult. It's a little bit harder. All because of man's passivity. And getting back to my prevailing theme in, in relation to what Satan's plan is, I want to go then to Genesis chapter 4, where we talk about this, um, this story of Cain and Abel, where, where Cain and Abel are both giving sacrifices to the Lord. And Abel brought, verse 4, the firstborn of his flock and of the fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why is your countenance falling? fallen? If you do well, will, not, will it not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it again. Sin's desire is for us, for people. When Jesus was tempted in the desert, in the wilderness, and he, he answered Satan with the word of God over and over and over again. Then Satan departed for him. But he only departed for an opportune time because our adversary, the devil, roars about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And the way that he's trying to devour men, to devour black men specifically, but all men, is by making men worthless, passive, right? That's all being a woke and enlightened man is, is just being passive. Do whatever you want. Women have power. I'm a male feminist. That's all you're doing. That's all it is, is being passive. It's being, I, I don't even know. I don't, I, I do know, but I don't want to say it. Because, you know, I love the Lord. But come on. We're being extremely passive. Extremely passive as men. And then we already know that the desire for women is to rule. Your desire will be for your husband. Your desire will be to rule men. But he should have rulership over you. And so women always, always at, at, at the end of the degradation of a society is going to be the matriarchy. It's going to be women taking over. That's what my friend was disgusted about in that show, The Best Man, is that, yeah, that's the plan is for women to be the leaders, right? Because men, men obviously aren't equipped to be leaders because we're caught up in sin. We've given in to this desire. Cain was angry. And so he made some gangster rap about his op Abel. And then he, you know, then he, he, he finished the job. And this is what we hear over and over again. And then death. Death. Death is the next plan, especially, I think, for black people. Is it, is it, it's obvious that, that when you promote a lifestyle in which there is no production, right? Transgenderism, homosexuals, they cannot have babies. It is, it is an obvious thing, and yet, for some reason, our, our society is confused on this. But a man and a man cannot have a baby. A man and a man cannot have a baby. There's a great Monty Python uh, skit that's going around that, that's talking about uh, 
men wanting women's rights and, and how foolish that is. A man and a man can't have a baby. Neither can a woman and a woman have a baby. If time permitted, I would go into Romans 1 and talk more about this. But all that, that it suffices to say at this point is that this is not productive. That it's causing the dwindling of the population, which is exactly the enemy's plan. Steal, kill, destroy. Steal, kill, destroy. Get you to destroy yourselves through all of these these philosophies that seem like wisdom, right? She, her, hers, what are your pronouns? All of these philosophies, right, that are, are telling us that, that if you're a, a male, you can simply change your gender, which, yeah, you can do it, but we're also telling that to kids, that they can have what's called um, gender uh, confirming, gender affirming, care, which basically is simply a, 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 a cudgel to uh, usher in pedophilia. Why? Because if children can make sexual decisions about their bodies, right? If you can choose to mutilate your body parts, then, then that's not very um, much of a far cry from being able to then make other decisions with your bodily organs as a child, correct? If you can make one decision about your genitalia, you can make other decisions regarding your genitalia. And yet no one, no one thinks about these things. I know that a lot of people do, and, and I'm, I'm sure that, that we have a, a good um, amount of people that hopefully are awakening to these issues, but but some of these things are, are quite obvious, and yet we we have been um, so agreeable, especially women, have been so agreeable and so emotionally swayed. Right? I I'd rather have a, a live daughter than a dead son. <laughs> We've been so emotionally swayed that we don't realize that what is happening is harm and the degradation of society and basically allowing this world to become Satan's playground. I hope that some of the things that I've talked about today have made sense to you. We've talked about the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We've talked about the desire of women to rule over men. We've talked about passivity and how Adam was passive and how that gene is passed down over men. And we've talked about how it is that Satan is now trying to destroy, steal and kill. This is his plan. And I pray, I pray that we'd have more men that would step up. We'd have more women that would step up and just say the truth, but say the truth in love because you know, the other part of even that curse for women, right? Is it, is it although she would desire, right? Rulership of her husband, but her husband would, would have authority over her. But then it also says that the woman will be saved in childbirth. Right? It says, and I will put enmity, it's, it's the curse actually for the serpent. I will put enmity, Genesis 3, 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And so we know that our God will crush Satan under his feet. He is already victorious. We fight from a place of victory if we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I would plead with you, if you don't know Jesus, then times are just going to get harder and harder. But for us that know him, we know that we will see a victory because of our Lord Jesus Christ. So be blessed today. Those are my thoughts. Let me know 
what your thoughts are. I hope that I'm not misapplying the scriptures. So let me know. Um, I, I humbly accept any sort of correction on this. Uh, so let me know what your thoughts are. My name is Ali Shuaga, and this has been 10 Points to Ponder.